how are we to treat others? That's a good question to ask. And if we're talking about our treatment of others, then it seems fitting to start with a maxim that physicians have lived by for many centuries. First, do no harm. Surely we are not to do harm to other people. The actor Paul Eddington, best known for his roles in The Good Life and Yes Minister, once said in an interview that he hoped his epitaph could truthfully say he did very little harm. And that's not easy, he said. Most people seem to me to do a great deal of harm. If I could be remembered as having done very little, then that would suit me. What a beautiful, humble response to the question of how we would like to be remembered as having done very little harm. Because he is right. Most people do a great deal of harm. Even Christians, even those who know that they are to love God and to love their neighbour, even people like us. When St Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, he wanted to write a truly comprehensive introduction to the Christian life. And having spoken about all that God has done in Jesus Christ and what it means for us to live in him, so he then comes to the question of how we are to treat others. And he does pretty much say that we are to do no harm. But he says so much more besides. He says, so then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbours. For we are members of one another. What is always interesting about the advice that Paul gives us is not just the advice. Sure, it's good to speak the truth and to have nothing to do with falsehood. But it is his reasoning that really strikes home. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbours. For because we are members of one another. If we are to do no harm, then we must first recognise our interdependence. How we behave, what we do, has an effect on others. And how we treat others really matters because we are members of one another. It's like that bit in the play An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. In the play, an inspector enters a dinner party and claims to be investigating the suicide of a young, working-class woman called Eva Smith. But at the end, the inspector says this. Just remember this. One Eva Smith has gone, but there are millions and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths still left with us, with their lives, their hopes and fears, their suffering and chance of happiness, all intertwined with our lives and what we think and say and do. We don't live alone. We are members of one body. We are responsible for each other. That is exactly what Paul is saying. We are members of one another. And other people's lives and hopes and fears, their suffering and chance of happiness, are really all intertwined with our lives and what we think and say and do. We are members of one another. So build each other up. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, says St Paul. But only what is useful for building up, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. We can be so destructive, you know it's true. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, words can utterly destroy my self-esteem. They can rob me of any self-confidence. They can leave my well-being in tatters. But kind words, encouraging words, gracious words can build me up and give me strength. Paul talks about our words giving grace to those who hear. What a brilliant phrase and something we can turn into a prayer. May my words, may my words give grace to those who hear. So Paul says, put away from you all bitterness and wrath, all anger and wrangling, all slander 
together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. You know, I've spoken a lot with people recently, people who, in one way or another, have been abused or badly treated by others. And what strikes me is that the abuse that they experience has so much to do with power. But the irony, the bitter irony of it all, is that although their abusers believe that they are powerful, that they have the upper hand, the truth is that they are hopelessly trapped in a vile cesspit of their own making. Bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander and malice make for a ghastly and toxic cocktail that ends up poisoning the abuser and destroys them from within. If you want to be happy, if you want to be really happy, then live in love. Rejoice in giving grace to those around you. Build each other up. Encourage one another. Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted. And forgive one another. You know, I wonder what I would want my epitaph to be. And I think I would like it to be, he always saw the good in people and never, never held a grudge. People have not always been kind to me, it's true, but I genuinely harbour no grudges. I bear no malice. I only want to give grace to others. Perhaps that is not far from being remembered as having done very little harm. And that works for me. First, do no harm. If we all lived by that maxim, then I'm sure the world would be a much happier place. Amen.